Um, our guest, if you, if you don't know, AG may have been living under a rock for the last several years. Mute, please, on Zoom. Uh, AG has a storied career. Uh, he and I spent an hour, hour and a half together the other day getting another. We've got some interesting things in common, including being business gypsies of sort. Um, I took the opportunity to further acquaint, try and acquaint um, uh, AG with some of the DISCA uh, background, including some of my boring uh, charts. But we had a really good conversation. Uh, we're kind of overdue in having him as a guest speaker, but it seems quite timely given where the Bay Park is at this point, getting really revved up on their phase two. So um, we're going to ask AG to speak, uh, and then we uh, we can keep it on the brief side with the slides, allowing a little bit more extra time for um, so with that said, E.G., welcome Thank to you, David. Uh, this. Thank you. Um, I've met many of you, and it's good to be back. Um, we're neighbors, obviously. Um, I brought one lead behind. It's, um, it's from April 2021, so it's a bit dated. But it's an op-ed that talks about how the Bay will benefit the community, and it goes through the the health and social and community health and conservation, environmental and then economic values. So you're welcome to take one of those. Um, my colleague Trey Hammett is here with me. Trey just joined us a whopping six weeks ago, maybe six weeks ago. So he is an instant expert on everything that we're doing. He's jumped in, he's a member of the team, and he's primarily uh, responsible for grants and, uh, and fundraising. So how do we Slide show up and advance the slide. Moment. Okay. You're driving. With apologies to the mayor and vice mayor, this is going to look a lot like the presentation you just saw two weeks ago. Okay. Because it is. <laughs> you saw it two weeks ago. I'm also going to apologize. I'm good until 5 p.m. and Trey will stay afterwards um, if you still have questions of us, but I have a chamber um, commitment. Over. Well, this is amongst our biggest Zoom crowd ever, I think. Uh, it's really good to see. Okay, so we're at the right place at the right time. Next slide, please. That looks like the end. Let's go that way. Perfect. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to try to accomplish three objectives, an update on the Bay sort of to date, phase two progress, and a preview of what's ahead, and then what you might be able to do now. Next slide, please. There we go. Hmm. Okay, yes. Um, this, you know, some may think this goes without saying. David and I were talking about that. We both spent a lot of time traveling around the world, mostly on business and in most cities. Great parks do make great cities. I'm very pleased and proud of what our city, Sarasota, has done uh, investing in parks and recreation. And I'm very pleased that our, they are our partner here. However, if you talk to most people on the street, they will tell you in Sarasota, great beaches make great cities. And so we're trying to get the balance right. Green space to go with the brown beach. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the great things about this project and one of the things that I inherited when I came aboard to serve on the Sarasota Bayfront Planning uh, Organization, which was tasked with um, proposing master and a governance plan and a financial strategy for what's become the pay were, were guiding principles that were initially um, the result of a series of community dialogues 
meetings with neighborhoods, neighborhood groups, uh, different organizations. I think at the peak, we were over 50 members of Bayfront 2020 Coalition. They were aided by HRNA advisors from New York. And they basically <coughs> came up with these principles. And I have to say, these continue to guide everything that we do. Uh, we're in the business of transformation of first and foremost, conserving the land and transforming the land and the water into a healthy environmental sustainable state. We are one part for all and to be open and accessible, free and welcoming to the full and rich diversity of our community. We are a gathering place and that's one of the things that's really working as I'll talk about in a moment. We're sustainable environmentally, improving water quality, but we're also going to be sustainable financially and sustainable operationally. And then one of the most amazing things about this startup, because we are still a startup, is that it's built on partnerships. We have a major long-term partnership with the city of Sarasota. All of our implementation partners, so all of our architects, designers, landscapers, engineers, construction firms are partnered. I'm the project manager. My planning partner is from Kimberly Horn. My owner's uh, rep is a consultant from Sarasota. My other planning partner is from, uh, from Sasaki and agency. Uh, on the programming side, which we'll talk about in a moment, and on the operating side, we have over 200 partners. So when you go to the park, you participate in an activity or an event or a program, that program is being provided by a partner, most of whom, most of whom are from here in Sarasota. Next slide, please. This is a timeline. It takes a bit of time to bake a cake and it's taken us uh, about a decade, um, but the progress really started uh, to pick up and I feel like we moved step-by-step step in, a, in a logical, building block way to get where we are. There are a lot of firsts. The guiding, oh, principle, the guiding principles were a first. Um, I think a community um, a community committee to propose a master plan was a first. Um, for sure, the um, partnership agreement with the city was a first. The tax increment financing was a first. And we started building park in 2020 Fountain Garden area in New Pagoda. We then did the Mangrove Bayou um, walkway in 2021 and we opened the park that you see now. There are 24 acres, 10 fully finished in October of 2022. Um, next slide, please. I've learned in life that um, saying what you're gonna do and doing what, you're say, what you say usually works. Um, this is an artist's depiction of what we thought the uh, main eight or 10 acres of the park would look like. Next slide, please. We're going to go pretty fast now. That's what it actually looks like at sunset. Next slide, please. This is a night view, same park, different angle. Mangrove Bayou on the right, common ground on the left. Next slide, please. This is the, um, the uh, promenade that we're looking west between Boulevard of the Arts and Sarasota Bay. Next slide, please. This is the arch or the shade structure on the pavilion by the Nest Cafe at night. Next slide, please. Swing on the mangrove by walkway overlooking the bayou actually right here. Probably two, two of the favorite birds in Sarasota these days, Sarah and Zoda named by the community. Next slide, please. Sunset, we, we have 12 or 15 yogis now. We, we have hundreds at our yoga classes. We have probably a thousand at our weekly fitness classes, which are the full range. Um, it's incredibly popular and we've had to move the yoga classes around the, around the park to uh, find enough room to accommodate all of the uh, aficionados. Next slide, please. Um, we do movies every Thursday night. We do a special family movie night once a month on Fridays. These are quite well attended. 
and frankly, a real value for families that have a couple of children. And if they go to the movie theater, they're out $100 or more by the time they get one of the tickets, by the time they go out of the shop, popcorn, and a Coke. As you know, if you've ever been to our movies, sometimes we're able to offer free popcorn. For a while, we were offering free ice cream. That was a bad idea. Kids and sugar don't mix when everybody wants to watch the movie. Next slide, please. Um, we do have dance every Wednesday night. I was reminded it's Bailando tonight, so we have salsa one night a month. We do Hollywood, believe it or not. We do uh, Zumba, and we were doing line dancing. So if you, you know, if the spirit moves you and you want to get your feet moving, it's amazing the turnout that we get for dance night. Next night, or next slide, please. Okay, this is uh, sort of a little accounting of how we've been doing. Uh, this is through, um, I think this is through March, but about 450,000 um, guests have come to the park since we opened in October of 22. Over 50,000 have come to one or more activity or event. We actually count at every activity event and we have three counters that count people um, coming to the park. The great thing about um, guests who come to activities, they tend to more often be new and they tend to come from farther. So we're not just reaching Sarasota County, we're reaching the Manatee, DeSoto and Collier counties. Um, we have a lot of, uh, we've, we've made over two and a half million connections with people in the community. We do something like this every week. We're in touch with our guests in the community virtually every day. We're very proud of the 70 million plus gallons of stormwater that we're treating. We're very focused on resiliency. That entire one mile of contiguous Sarasota Bay shoreline will all be resilient. There will be eight acres of the 50 acres that will be resilient shoreline along the bay, along the bayou, along the creeks, around the ponds. And we're also very proud of what we're doing to take nitrogen and phosphorus out of the water before it enters the bayous, the creeks, the ponds, the bay. And before we're done, we're going to have to treat over 300 million gallons of water. So that's the, that's the charge ahead. Next slide, please. Um, now we'll turn to phase two progress. Next slide, please. Um, this is the original condition of the park. And I always say, yes, that is a color photo of the park. And it simply demonstrates how much of the park was hardscape, you know, rooftops and, and, and mostly surface parking. This is, the, um, <clears throat> this is the master plan update that was approved. That's fine, we can stay here. That was approved by um, the city commission, mayor, the vice mayor and their colleagues on November the 20th of 2023. And we outlined in, uh, in the dotted blue, the five projects, four projects really that make up phase two. This is uh, as you'll see in a minute, um, twice as big a project as we undertook in phase one. There are four pieces. Um, we're going to replace the seawall and the day docks and dredge the canal. We're going to extend the resilient shoreline up here. We're looking at seeing whether we can add this, if we can scrape together enough money to do it, and throughout Hogs Creek, which is fairly polluted, unfortunately. Um, we're going to redo the, the front door of the park which again, if you look at it across the street, looks mostly like parking lot. It will look like park, just like the park looks coming from Boulevard of the Arts. And we're praying, and we would ask you to pray with us that the Army Corps of Engineers will eventually approve, sorry, I didn't mean to touch that, uh, will approve the Sunset Pier, which is in be three years, three years in the approval process this September. I hope we don't have to wait until then. Next slide, please. Uh, the budget for phase two is $65 million. Um, that was the estimate way back in, uh, in the early fall of 2021, but, but we're sticking to it. Um, $48 million of that $65 million is being funded by a tax um, backed city bond, which was issued last spring. Um, and which has already been helping us um, pay for the design and uh, the early stage work. At the time of this slide, we had 17 plus million dollars in government grants. Um, the city's doing 
give us one of their EPA grants that they can't use that we may be able to use for resilient shoreline and stormwater. That would take these grants up closer to 20 million. So we should have, knock on wood, with this um, government money plus private funding that's interested in some of the projects, be able to finish, finish everything in three years. And that's important. Uh, the city bond terms uh, require that we complete 85% of the construction by May of 2026. So as you'll hear in a minute, we're gonna begin construction this summer. Next slide, please. This just is a little bit more detail showing that this seawall, if you've been over there, is in, in pretty bad shape. So we're basically gonna, going to build a new seawall, new infrastructure. These day docks will enable connectivity from the bay and from the barrier islands, from the Keys, you'll be able to you know, come over here with your boat and dock for the day. In phase three, we'll add additional day docks on the north side. Next slide, slide please. Um, this is a very rough sketch of the resilient shoreline, but essentially it's going to be a wetland version of what we did in the mangrove by, by use. So we'll use ponds and terracing and native vegetation to be part of the whole train that, um, that um, cleanses the water and removes the pollutants, as well as, of course, denitrification trenches and baffle boxes and all the other techniques that we use. You will be able to walk throughout it on a boardwalk if you're over the pond, on a walkway if you're on ground. Um, next slide, please. This is artist's rendition of, of what it should look like. Um, we're hoping it'll look a lot like that. Um, there will be shade structures, although I doubt they're gonna be that dramatic um, along the bay. Next slide, please. This is the front of the park. Um, so we're looking from Broadway, Alinari, Renaissance, across North Tamiami Trail into the park. North Tamiami Trail will be tree-lined. There'll be a tree-lined and landscape median down the middle of the parking area. And there'll be a promenade that goes from 10th Street down to 6th Street, also tree-lined. So it's going to look like park, okay? And in the same time, and I'm really happy about this, we are, we've been working our way through the four uh, historically significant, architecturally significant buildings um, on this front edge of the park, the Garden Club, the Blue Pagoda, the Chitsi, and the Municipal Auditorium, all of which are on the National Historic Register. Next slide, please. This is what it looks like today. Next slide. This is what it will look like. Okay, next slide, please. This is what it looks like today in front of the Municipal Auditorium. Next slide. This is what it will look like. Next slide. And the next one. I was just talking with one of your group about fountains here in Sarasota. Um, we are going to find a way to, um, to save the hazard fountain, or at least the pineapple. And it's left at the top. All of the engineering and all of the, the mechanics, of course, will have to change. And, and we're going to move it closer to the municipal auditorium, which is a better, we all believe, a better place for it. Next slide, please. Um, this is the Chitsi today. This, is, um, this was actually, I don't know if it was, was it leased or by the, to the county. It was, it was definitely operated in the county when I first came here as a historical association and then that shut down and then it was abandoned for a while. And it's, it's, uh, it's, in, it's in rough shape, but we are going to be able to recover the building from a structural standpoint. We got a grant with the city that enabled us to do the design and structural engineering and we are going to renovate it. And it will become the office and operations center of the Bay Park Conservancy in the back and then in the front, we will recreate as best we can the old library look and that will be a reception area and conference room. Next slide, please. This is the Blue P Pagoda. Um, I remember distinctly when we walked into it several years ago. Um, 
it had not been used for a while. It was pretty dingy, it had a, an odor about it, and it needed some significant cleaning up. And we got a lot of help, a lot of in-kind support, and um, it's it's very operational today, and it's it's in good structural shape. Um, and of course, we landscaped all the way around it. Next slide, please. This is the kind of transformation that we can do. This is the garden club. This was Tuttle's puddle. This was polluted. We had to send people in in hazmat suits to clean it up. Um, the Japanese lantern was in the bottom. That's on. So it was recovered. Um, we added the fountain um, as much for water quality uh, as for aesthetic reasons. And then we've done a couple rounds of planting and we've totally planted around the garden club. So we'll go inside the garden club. We just got a gift from PGT, a donation of over $300,000 worth of sliders and windows that we'll use in the garden club in the Chitsi and in the Bayfront Community Center, which is the back, back piece of uh, the municipal auditorium. Next slide, please. Um, last piece is, uh, is the town square. There is something called Plaza de Santo Domingo. It really hasn't been used as a plaza uh, for the most part. We've done a few things there. We did a Ukraine event there. We did an Ian event there. We did our first taste of the bay there, um, but this will become this will become park um, with um, hardscape and a gathering place, and and be just a, a flexible area where we can do all kinds of different activities and events for the community. Next slide, please. So, uh, what can you do? I hope. Have you all been to the park? That's a nod. Okay. All right. Good. Probably the best thing you can do for your physical health and your mental and emotional health is take a walk in the park every, every day or a few days a week. Um, participate in one of the activities. How many of you have participated in activity or event? You don't have to tell me whether you're a dancer or you've done all that. Um, and then bring your family, friends, and neighbors You know, to watch the sun, sunset, take a walk, or engage. Um, we're very, we just went through giving challenge, we were incredibly grateful and pleased that uh, the second time in a row, the community was very generous to the Bay Park Conservancy. We are still toking it up, but we think we have now over 2,000 friends, which is, you know, really great. And, um, and the thing about the way we do our, um, our fundraising is we want that to be as accessible and open as possible. We got several really nice emails from people who said that it was great that here was an organization that was quite happy to receive $10 or $25 or whatever they could do, you know, to contribute to their park. Um, we have 112, is that, is that about right? 112 business partners of the Bay, um, almost all local small businesses. This is an incredibly important program because every dollar they give us goes to enable the program to, programming to remain free. And all of our programming is free except for some of the paddle. You can learn to paddle for free, okay? But if you go and, and want to paddle for an hour or two, you do have to rent a paddle. All the other activities are free. Um, and then last but not least, um, learn more about the needs of the Bay. We've had over 100 volunteers at various times uh, work with us. Um, we have some people that work with us part-time. So um, if you're interested in learning more about what we do or how we do it, um, we'd be happy to talk to you. We're neighbors. Most of us are neighbors. So that's all I've got in terms of a presentation. I hope it didn't go too no, long. No, no, that was just yeah. perfect. Um, our <coughs> protocol, everybody, is uh, we have uh, board members and then we have some time our member reps. But from our board members, are there any questions, comments? I've got a couple that I, I want to refer to. Karen, anybody? Uh, AG, one of the things you and I talked about this connectivity being one of the guiding principles and the challenge we have with the moat, so to speak, of the 41. Yeah. Can you talk to us about yes. how we think about that as the rosemary continues to grow the quail? Yes. Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to probably take it in three parts. Okay. Um, first of all, the master plan did anticipate that. Um, 
um, 41 was going to be a challenge to cross safely. And the original master plan that was approved, as you saw, it actually had three overpasses, one at 62, one at 10 Street, one at Street. Um, the current master plan, the most recent one that was approved, has one at 9th Street. So I think one thing that we will be doing is recommending an overpass as part of phase three. So when we move north of 10th Street and do that piece, we're also, we would like to take on the overpass. And uh, that's important because I think there are city conversations. I don't know if they've progressed the plans for a garage, a public garage in the Rosemary District, which is also tight for those of you who who live in the Rosemary District is very tight on parking. I think so. So that was anticipated. Second thing that um, was part of the original plan was that a lot of that parking would go under the park. By the time we get to the edge of the resilient shoreline in phase two, we'll be at 10 feet above bay level. By the time we get to, if the city chooses to go ahead with a new performing arts center, we'll be at 18 feet above bay level. So just like in Miami, just like in lots of European cities and Asian cities, there is a very real possibility that park could be a built over parking, okay? Um, third thing I would say is there is a scheduled meeting, well, in the tax, in the interlocal tax uh, increment funding district proposal, funding is provided for three capital improvements. One is the park, one is a portion towards the new performing arts center because the city's agreement with that nonprofit is sort of 50-50 in terms of funding. <coughs> and there's a, there's a proposal, and I believe Vice Mayor Mayor Koch might have actually made the recommendation, and it was a good one, to connect 10th Street and 6th Street Boulevard of the Arts to the park in a way that was pedestrian friendly, bicycle friendly, micro mobility friendly, safe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As you and I talk, there is a meeting, I think many of us received a notice in the last couple of days on May the 23rd, I believe it's at City Hall, and uh, the Transportation Planning Department is going to unveil their current, what they call complete streets proposal. So I haven't seen it, <clears throat> I don't know if, uh, I don't know if well, I won't put our I won't put our mayor and vice mayor on the spot whether they've seen it or not. But um, that's if you're interested in that, and there's a lot of interest about safely crossing Sixth Street and Tenth Street. You know, you definitely want to go to that meeting if you can, if you can make it. Now, this is your opportunity, right, to to understand what the city's planning for your neighborhood and for this kind of connectivity. And the last piece is the whole. Um, all of those day docks and a lot of the changes that are being made to the boat launch are intended to improve our connectivity on the water side, and there's virtually none. Again, I believe the city is working on, or at least, how shall I say, entertaining uh, proposals for water taxi service. There is water taxi service uh, up in Bradenton to Anna Marie Island. So it's going, it's probably gonna come. And the question is, you know, when it comes, yes, we would like to be a stop on the water taxi, you know, service route. I'm sure Bayfront Park would, would want to be a stop. But you could, if you really think about it, if a water taxi is in place, there are plenty of logical stops, right? Ringling, the Bay, Bayfront Park, Selfie, et cetera. So that's, when I think about connectivity, I try to think about it, 360 degrees. Uh, 41 is a challenge. I guess the last thing I would say, we did, the state did reduce the speed limit to 40, from 45 to 35. I think there are things that could be done to actually so, slow the traffic down <coughs> to 35. Mm -hmm. And um, and city uh, engineering and traffic team actually put together some proposals a couple of years ago that Bill and I were encouraging them to continue to work on. And I, I don't know what's happened you know, with those, but it's an important subject. And it's something that your residents and your, you know, your condo associations are going to want to want to weigh in on. Other, uh, Victor. There are yes, a lot sir. of people who live uh, adjacent to uh, Bay, particularly on IFBLDB and uh, Boulevard 
of your eyes. Yes. An original master plan seemed to have had a bridge that we had thought. I can tell you, somebody who tried very carefully to get across the street, that there are a lot of people who are really concerned about safe transport and their pedestrians or their vehicles. Do we have a shot at any point in time of having a bridge there or some means of getting across that? Uh, we we actually we actually sketched it out uh, for the city and at least uh, the city management wanted us to take a look at 9th Street. I I'm, I'm now you don't want to trust your memory too much, right? My recollection mm -hmm. was between Boulevard and the then owners managers of the boutique hotel on the south side. They felt that it was going, you know, any overpass was going to be too close to their buildings and some of their residents in their rooms. So they were giving the city feedback that maybe we should look at a different, at a different uh, crossover spot. Um, I could probably dig out those plans, but we actually did sketch them out. We actually did look at the engineering, and the engineering actually is probably the easiest because. Uh, coconut is, I know, what elevation is Coconut at? It's like 20. Yeah, so, I mean, I know we could pretty much launch straight off of Coconut, and, you know, it, it wasn't going to be that difficult to build. Ninth Street's, the advantage of Ninth Street, it's wide open, it's wider mm -hmm. open, and we have a longer run. That's, that's a very deep property, and I believe city management talked with the owner of the property, and he was willing, he was more open to um, an overpass you know, going in there. I think what's important is we put one in and we try it. You know, I, I don't see any downside of trying it and see whether it improves safe crossing the road, reduces the number of accidents, and frankly, just allows people to get back and forth. And it's not just into the Rosemary, it's north of the Coconut, it's east into Gillespie Park, it's you know, northeast into Newtown. I mean, there are a lot of neighborhoods that are served by being able to get across that street. I, mean, I, I got a question from somebody on the email. Is there anybody else? Okay. Um, benches in city, sitting areas. I yes. know benches and sitting areas in parks in general, you know, put them in, take them out because they're unsheltered in misuse. And um, the question is, what's the balance and what are some of the plans as you get into phase two of yeah. trying to thread um, the needle. Another thing we're continuously experimenting with, I would, I'm pretty certain that the facts show that year by year, the unsheltered and, you know, otherwise known as homeless population, mm -hmm. which by the way, has the right to use the park as long mm -hmm. as they're complying with mm -hmm. all of city park and rec policies, mm -hmm. right? Um, we have far fewer trying to sleep in the park either during the day and overnight, the combination of security cameras, which run from south of Van Weasel Hall, all around the mangrove walk, mm -hmm. all the way down to the playground. And we're just going through uh, the camera placement along the promenade have dramatically discouraged anyone coming to the park or staying in the park after and lastly, um, well, two more things. Uh, Sarasota Police Department, uh, if you've probably noticed, the bike, bicycle control uh, mm -hmm. patrol is regular now. They come through in the morning, they come through in the afternoon, they often come through in the evening. We bring in either SP, uh, Sarasota Police Department, or private security for certain events in the evening if they're going to be larger. And we randomly hire private security to to work the night shifts. So that combination has been good for you know managing appropriate you know appropriate use of the park. In terms of the benches, um, most of our benches have have dividers. They're freestanding benches, they have dividers which discourage you know, sleeping. Uh, by the way, you really should, nobody should be sleeping in the park during the day. It doesn't matter who it is, right? Um, but we do have built-in seating areas that don't have dividers, right? Under shade structures, uh, around the oval, 
and uh, and we've experimented with at least three different kinds of, of benches for use, park guest experience, maintenance, you know, a whole bunch of different factors. Good. We'll probably keep the, experimenting. I, I think what I'm hearing is as it gets more activated, yeah. more benches, maybe looking out at the water. Yeah. And we're going to add to the furniture. Uh, more of the furniture is going to be moved south because if you do go over for a sunset, it's crowded. Right? People are all along the light wall. They're on the sunset deck. They're they're sitting there. So we'll be buying some more anoramic chairs. We'll be moving some of the chairs that don't get as much use on that little beach that's just north of that kind of purple bridge that's used to uh, city okay. still uses to uh, filter water. Okay. Are there Open it up to member reps. Are there any comments? Oh, Patrick. Well, I had a question that came in yes, sir. Uh, earlier. Uh, and again, what you presented there is fantastic. We're the next door neighbors were active users of the park. Uh, the question came up again about during the construction and the roadways and the walkways. Yes. Um, and you're absolutely right. It's a nice one mile up, one mile back, a good two mile, 40 minute walk for those who stay active. However, during the construction, that goes away. And the concern is, how are you going to build and it? build yeah. and still allow access? Because in the past, yeah. the residents have been forced to walk along van ways away, yeah. dodging trucks and so forth. And that was not good or walk through the yeah. uh, thing. Uh, but uh, the the answer is carefully well, and planfully. Well, <laughs> and a, and a part of that yeah. is, there seems to be some changes in that whole roadway construction area. And will there be an opportunity for a feedback session? Of course, we had your outreach community working group or something to actually people using the walkways and roadways to feedback as to how that's going to work. Okay. Is that a, a okay, that's a multiple part question. I'll Sorry, try to yeah. cover all of them. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would, we made a number of changes, as you know. Um, Patrick, on Van Ways Away, I think the most important one we made is we, we reduced the speed limit sure, from yeah. 35 yeah. to 15. We put in the warning light system, so if you are going over 15, it'll catch you on your bike. What's not perfect, and we don't have a great option for it right now, is we don't have pedestrian sidewalks all the way along Van Ways Away, so you have to cut into the park. We put in, we also put in safe crosswalks, safer crosswalks. So as we do the cultural district, we're looking at, can we put some sidewalk or at least walkway on the back side, the west side, you with me? West side of the Chitsi and the art center to get you to the sidewalk, get you to the town square and get you to the okay. sidewalk that goes north, okay? That also connects you to the sidewalks that go, that promenade that goes down the road. So that's, that's how we're addressing that one. On the resilient shoreline, um, you know, I hate to say it because I'm, you know, I'm a heavy walker too. Um, what we're going to have to do is walk around the fence and walk through the parking lot and then connect back to the walkway south of the uh, boat launch. Now, the good news is we're going to go in and do the canal infrastructure work starting August and September. And we'll be done at the end of the first quarter next year before we start the resilient shoreline. So we're trying to sequence and cadence the projects so we don't have a lot shut down. We're going to be doing some, we do a little bit of improvement every year, every summer, as you probably notice in the park itself. So there will be some fenced off areas, but we're going to try to keep all the access and all the walkways open. Uh, a member rep, any one last question? Yes, sir. About that. Has there been any change to the uh, uh, food truck area that was supposed to be on the south side of the south side of the boat launch? Boat launch? <coughs> That's going to be part of. Um, <coughs> if we went back to the master plan, um, we add launch. We add. Uh, <coughs> we have fifty percent if you go all the way back. <coughs> We definitely add uh, launch capacity for the, the boaters and we, and we need it on weekends, okay? We add um, convenience retail. So if you think of what's available, you know, down by uh, Sofrito Fishing right. Pier. Yeah, exactly. So it'll be similar to that. There's provision for up to three 
bayfront restaurants. And then there's provision for an arch shade structure that would have the food truck village. Okay. That more so that's all now. planned. Is that, that more phase three now? That's phase, phase. That, that will be phase three. That will be phase three. What we tried to do was put all the architectural and hardscape stuff we could in phase three because it's sort of the same kind of group architects and designers, the same kind of engineers and the same kind of construction. And we pulled forward more of the resilient shoreline. I really do want to be able to do that resilient shoreline all the way up to Hawks Creek. I really want to be able to do all of Hawks Creek. So if we can get all of the green space done, all of the resilience done and a big chunk of the stormwater treatment done, then we can we can work there. The other reason why we want to do that all in phase three is depending on where the Purple Ribbon Committee recommendation comes out in another year, roughly, and where the, you know, where the architects, you know, plan for, uh, for a new performing arts center comes out, that's going to come together in the next year. So we want to be working out of the way of whatever transpires, transpires for Van Blazel Hall and, and or a new performing arts center. Right now, it's they're just I mean, essentially they're they're placeholders. As long as Van Weasel Hall operates, I mean, we have a very close partnership with them. So um, we do a lot of you know, we do a lot of activities and programs together, and, and we touch each other all the way around. So um, that's the plan until that's not the plan, and that's the city's decision. Ultimately, the mission. AG, thank you so much. Thank you all very much. We're, we're really excited and thank you for taking the time to uh, Happy be, to be with. We, uh, we appreciate the update. And it's incredibly exciting. I mean, you just think back three or four years ago, what what has happened and it's just kind of it's mind been, You know, I'll just say two things. This has been incredible. I can't, you know, there are probably 150 ideas that are in the park that were recommended from one community member or one park guest or another, right? It just gets incorporated. And the other thing I'll say, and I said this, I uh, can't remember whether it was city or county commission, we are reaching virtually all ages, eight months to 88 in the park, all ethnicities, all genders, all nationalities. If you're there on a Sunday and listen to the number of languages that are being spoken, it isn't just English and Spanish languages from all over the world. And I mentioned, you know, we're regularly seeing people at our activities and programs coming from, from multiple counties. And of course, visitors, right? I think there are 2,000 hotel rooms that are within a one mile walk of uh, Bay. And there are currently 2,000 condo residences that are across the street from the Bay. And you know where that's going to end up. When the Rosemary finishes building and Quay finishes building, it's just going to be it's going to be nuts. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank thank you again, and stick around if you'd like. I, I, you got an I would accept. I have to go. I have to drive to my next one. <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you, thank you all. Yes, I'm going to stick around. Okay, all right. All right.